Simon's an early investor in Coinbase, in Kraken, in Bitfinex, in blockchain.com, in Robinhood, in Circle, in Ripple. I mean, it's just this rock star lineup of companies that you found and got in early. I'm going to take a million dollars of my savings and say, if I was starting from scratch today to build a retirement plan centered around Bitcoin, um, I'm going to do it with you um, live. What I love to do is, is introduce the right people to the right people. I assemble the smartest people I can think of or reach out to to carry that conversation. And that's exactly what I've done today. Please give my panel a round of applause. Welcome. Okay, guys, Jay Martin here, CEO of Cambridge House. And I'm sitting down today with Simon Dixon. Now, Simon's been on the show before. It was maybe six months ago, Simon, and we caught up. And the reason I brought you on is because, you know, as a lot of my viewers know, I use my, my channel and my newsletter quite selfishly in that I talk to people that uh, are more intelligent about things I want to know about, you know, and, and my background as a precious metal investor, um, technology investor, I'm obviously becoming more and more curious about my Bitcoin investment strategy. You know, I, I dollar cost average and I feel like it's a very safe and passive and, you know, doesn't do any brain damage to continually allocate some cash that way, but I always want to know more. I feel like my understanding is quite juvenile. And uh, so I invited Simon on and, and you helped me wrap my mind around some of the bigger concepts about how and why and, and when um, to invest in Bitcoin. <clears throat> now, before we jump in, like, you know, a lot of people are going to watch this and say, okay, it's another Bitcoin video. I'm tuning out because a lot of my viewers are gold bucks and I really am trying hard to smash that wall down because it's not one or the other. I don't, I've never thought of it as one or the other. I'm not a gold investor, therefore not a Bitcoin investor. They're different. They're both important and serve different purposes. Uh, so please bear with us. I think this is very important. Whether or not you love or hate Bitcoin, you need to understand it because this is coming. It's arrived and it's important to understand. So I'm really excited to have Simon back on the show here. And uh, uh, quick background on Simon. He's the founder of banktothefuture.com, um, but you know, very, very successful uh, technology and crypto investor. And some of the companies on your resume, Simon, I just have to shout out, Simon's an early investor in Coinbase, in Kraken, in Bitfinex, in blockchain.com, in Robinhood, in Circle, in Ripple. I mean, it's just this rock star lineup of companies that you found and got in early. Um, and so I'm really excited to have you because you know your resume is no joke, right? You put your money where your mouth is and you have a great track record. So I'm very excited to have you back on. now. All that to say, Simon, I watch trends for a living, right? My business is, is people driven. I run a conference series. I, I host uh, conversations like this. I listen and speak with people for a living. And so my investment philosophy is often driven on investor trends and sentiment. And a lot of what I'm seeing in the crypto market right now is remarkably reminiscent to September 2017 to January 2018. And to put that in perspective, I was running a few technology conferences in Canada and the United States, and I couldn't find enough crypto deal flow for my investor base. I couldn't. Uh, it was just the appetite was so voracious. Uh, and obviously, you know, uh, come February, the Bitcoin price crashed and a lot of people that invested in these crypto startups got burned. So, Simon, why, why, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing this beginning of a mania cycle? Are you seeing an, uh, an abundance of bullish sentiment? And what do you have to say to people about that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing um, a lot of, so every, new, every week you see a new billionaire come out and put their reputation to Bitcoin. Um, they probably got in a long time ago, but they're reaching a stage where they think it's acceptable to put their reputation. Um, and that mainly came from Paul Tudor Jones when he decided to uh, put, allocate a percentage of his hedge funds. Before that, it was um, venture capital uh, but now the the hedge fund industry did get involved, and now you know reputable, high profile investors, uh, Paul Tudor Jones kicked off the trend, and ever since then we've seen a flurry of billionaires that are willing to actually put their name to it. Um, the other thing that's happened this time, so 2017 um, was a complete bubble in crypto. Um, you know, I've seen several bubbles during my time. And uh, you've got the right strategy, which is dollar cost averaging. Um, I don't really get involved in those. Um, short term, I just believe in the long term fundamentals of Bitcoin. Um, but in 2017, it was very retail driven. Um, we're not seeing the same flurry of retail exchange 
um, activity. In fact, the activity on exchanges is not the same as it was in 2017. Um, we're seeing the corporations sort of taking a percentage of their balance sheets applying to the SEC to own Bitcoin as a public company. Um, we're seeing um, GBTC, which is the publicly traded um, or the, 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 the institutional way of getting in, um, pushing you know, like 25,000 to high net worth investors' Bitcoins every week um, that are being sucked in. So the supply is significantly shrinking with this mania uh, because it's all being taken by long-term holders um, as opposed to the short-term uh, retail frenzy that we're looking for a get-rich-quick scheme um, got FOMO'd into Bitcoin, fear of missing out, um, and then we're going to dump it the second that it got to capitulation stage. Um, we're about to see whether these institutions and corporations um, do hit the capitulation stage if we do get a correction. Um, but right now, I think you're seeing the real scarcity economics at play. Um, but what that means for the short term, you know, Bitcoin has a tendency to prove me wrong every time I try and make a short term forecast. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I mean, that is a difference that I see, you know, in these two markets. When I think back to September 2017 to January 18, and I, I say with absolute honesty, you know, we host events for several thousand investors and I couldn't find enough Bitcoin deal flow. It was crazy. And I, I've seen that rodeo before. I, I knew what was coming and, you know, that's what I do. Um, this t the difference I see this time is that it is it is the smart money or the big money moving first. They're leading the way this time. And that wasn't the case. It was retail leading the way in September 2017. And that's a big difference that I see. And all I see that is just, you know, credibility and a higher foundation, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> now, Simon, talk to me about the halving cycle in relation to historic Bitcoin rallies and where you think we are now. And does that help you predict a price correction at some point? Yeah, so this is my third halving. For those not too familiar, it's the monetary policy of Bitcoin. The supply of new Bitcoin halves every four years. So new Bitcoins are created every 10 minutes, um, and every four years it halves the number of Bitcoin. So we've now got 18 and a half million Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be 21 million, approx well, the, the approximately 18 and a half million. Um, and uh, that's the, the, the current situation. Now, um, every halving, this is my third halving that I've experienced, um, you get a flurry of new people that come in because they heard um, that halving is going to make them a bunch of money. Um, and every halving has been a very uneventful event. Um, on the day, um, people are very disappointed, and because they didn't get the pump they wanted, they end up selling off. Um, but six months later, you start to get the effect of the um, you know, almost the opposite of quantitative easing, which is known in our industry as quantitative tightening. Um, and so you start to see the effect of that scarcity um, and the reduction in the supply of new Bitcoins that are being rewarded to miners. Now, miners are the people that verify the transactions and they have to sell them to cover their electricity costs. They're not, they can't be long-term holders. So um, the, at the moment, the difference is, is that uh, their supply half, six months later, it starts to kick in. But rather than it hitting the market, um, because regulations are important to people and people want Bitcoins that don't have a dark history of going through the dark web or being used in dark markets, they're going straight to the miners and doing over-the-counter transaction trade so that they can get those newly mined Bitcoins into their fund, which have no dark history of going through any drug markets or anything like that. Um, so that's taking, again, it's contracting the supply and we're starting to see that six months on, which I believe is the, the actual reason uh, for the, the continued interest and in reaching all-time highs this week. Okay, something I don't understand, I'd love you to share some light on is, why does it matter, the history of a Bitcoin? Um, because ever since 9-11, there's been very aggressive anti-money laundering laws put into place. And that trend is the biggest bull market ever, which is new anti-money laundering laws. Um, and so when you're an institution and you try to get in, so for example, I bought my house with Bitcoin and I had to prove um, that those, those funds were earned in a legitimate way, the source of the funds, um, the source of the, and, and then you have to prove that because if you ever want to convert that into fiat in the future, 
um, then you have this blockchain that you can prove that they didn't go through a dark market or were used for the proceeds of crime or anything like that. So um, as this gets more regulated in terms of institutions being involved, the history of the Bitcoin becomes something that they factor in uh, to their consideration um, because of these aggressive anti-money laundering laws and they don't want to end up with Bitcoins that they can't spend. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, the smartest thing any investors can do right now in relation to their, their, their Bitcoin strategy, their, their crypto strategy, whether they're trying to trade it, using it as a safe haven asset class, uh, you know, hoping to use it uh, as a currency, whatever that is. Um, education is like of the utmost importance. That's, that's what, what I need to focus on right now. What I encourage all my audience and individuals reaching out to me asking about what should they be doing? Should they be purchasing a big block, uh, et cetera, right now? Um, and it led me actually down the path, Simon, of wanting to host a Bitcoin summit myself because we now host summits on the YouTube channel. They're going really well. And I tend to focus on areas where I'm looking for more exposure because I can do my diligence on new companies in real time in front of the audience. And it's a ton of fun. Um, and so I, I, you know, your, your team reached out, let me know about the course that you're offering. I had a look at it. And I was like, I don't need to do one. Uh, Simon, Simon's doing it. He's got a far better network in this industry than I do and a, obviously a much better understanding of it. So um, first, give, us the, give, give me the high-level overview, Simon. You're, you're offering a seven-week, seven-module um, Bitcoin investment uh, course, right, where you're, you're talking about different strategies and, and why and how. And so what's the, what's the elevator pitch, first of all? And then I want to jump into it a little bit. Yeah, sure. So having been involved in the industry from the beginning, having invested in, you know, my first investment was uh, BitPay, the company, um, which I, you know, uh, using Bitcoin and, uh, and that. Um, I've found that uh, there were people that have made and destroyed. So there were people that were involved in Bitcoin from the beginning um, that have still not reached their financial goals. Um, and there are some people that have become incredibly wealthy and reached billionaire club. Um, and I wanted to, uh, when I founded bank to the future.com, I've now had over a hundred thousand investors, um, investing and building, um, and investing in companies in this industry, six or seven of those went on to become unicorns that you've mentioned. Um, and, uh, we started to really know the difference between those that have um, succeeded and failed in this industry. Um, so because so many people end up asking, uh, we wanted to do a couple of things. Firstly, um, given the current markets and the situation right now, we wanted to create a free video series that guides people on how to get into this industry and how to invest in a responsible way, avoid the scams, structure it correctly, pay the correct level of tax, um, and just do it in a way that if I were starting from scratch, um, here's what I would do. Um, and uh, so that's exactly what we're doing. We're releasing a free video series. And um, so those that actually want to join us and build a long-term retirement plan um, around the approaches and strategies that we're talking about, um, then we're taking a percentage of those people that do the free course um, and inviting them to join us to actually build it. Um, and so while it is focused a lot on learning, um, it takes a lot of the lessons from traditional finance and applies them to the Bitcoin and crypto markets. Um, so as somebody that used to work in investment banking and trading and uh, traditional markets, um, there's a lot to learn from that. But at the same time, there's a lot to learn from the traditional market and gold investors um, that they can actually benefit from in the Bitcoin market. So I wanted to try and get that balance right. So, you know, the first module is traditional financial planning, um, how to actually know how much Bitcoin you want, how much you need to take, how much risk you need to take, um, port, you know, uh, kind of bucket allocations, that type of thing. Uh, the second module is the, uh, all of the investing principles. You talked about dollar cost averaging. There's other things like rebalancing and um, whether you uh, get into other cryptos or not. What percentage do you hold in custody? What do you keep yourself? Um, the third is the investing principles. So I mainly focus, I really want to keep it simple. I focus on five Bitcoin investing strategies. Um, and I try to benefit from all the noise and all the crazy things that happen in a much smarter way. You know, an example is investing in crypto exchanges rather than having and benefiting from their growth, rather than having to pick all these different cryptos and get involved in the craziness. Um, the next one is just really focused on how to actually not just buy Bitcoin and have a strategy, but how to build your Bitcoin. Um, so growth strategies. 
Um, the, the next module is on income. So how to actually leverage your Bitcoin, take some counterparty risk um, and actually generate income for the retirement. Um, and then the rest is just avoiding scams, um, it, structuring it in a way, um, getting a crypto friendly bank so that you don't actually get your bank account shut down. Um, and uh, many of the inheritance planning as well, which is a piece that most people get wrong. Um, so, you know, taking these tax strategies and various other things, um, fully legal strategies and applying it to crypto um, so that people can actually build a long-term inheritable um, retirement plan B, I call it, um, so that they can supplement their traditional, uh, you know, retirement plan that they may have. Okay. Yeah, that that's very helpful. Thank you. And so, so that is the focus of this. You're looking at long-term financial planning, essentially legacy planning, right? And how crypto factors into that. Um, do you, you know, do you, do you recommend or is, how, how do you handle percent allocations in the Bitcoin space when it comes to legacy planning like this? Um, well, so the way that I think about things is I split the world into three different outcomes. One is a maintenance of the status quo through financial engineering and the maintenance of the dollar standards that we're in today, um, which I consider my traditional portfolio. And um, the second is a complete shift in power, which is what I consider my gold portfolio. Um, and then I consider my what happens when you can't access your gold um, or we do get this new innovative store of value called Bitcoin. Um, the, and every, every year that I've done that strategy, my retirement plan B, the Bitcoin one, has completely outstripped um, all the other portfolios. Um, so when I think of um, you know, the, 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 what I would apply to those different things, you can still apply to Bitcoin. Um, and uh, that's really what this is, this is about. So even if it's just taking a percentage and betting on a slightly different outcome um, where, uh, you know, whatever, whatever comes next, um, then this is how to maximize the growth of the, the industry without having to take, you know, crazy risks like most people do in the, in the crypto markets. Okay. Okay. Re retirement plan B. I love it, man. Okay. Um, okay. So you have the three video modules people can consume for free. I'm going to pop a link up here for anybody who wants to jump into those, uh, I've watched them. Um, and if you're looking for the next step, so the, the, the modules introduce you to the concepts, right? If you wanna actually build the retirement plan, that's the, the broader seven week course that you're offering, it's behind a paywall. Uh, I'm gonna pop a link up there as well for anybody who wants to jump into that and actually action this advice, learn from you, correct? How to action this advice and how to build this plan. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually just going to be, I'm going to take a million dollars of my savings and say, if I was starting from scratch today to build a retirement plan centered around Bitcoin, um, I'm going to do it with you um, live. Um, and for those that don't actually, you know, in a position to do the program, then the free video series, it guides you on all the principles um, so that you can understand it, see if it's the, something that's right. Um, and then those that actually want to action it and do it, then they would go on to do the program. Got it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Simon, thanks so much for coming back on. It was great to connect with you again uh, and hear your thoughts on the market today and, uh, and this upcoming course. Great. Okay. Thanks for having me again.